Hello and welcome back to my channel. Lucimble has put out their first few MV teasers for their comeback, well, their debut, I guess, if you want to say, Sensitive. Uh, and we're going to be checking that out. And then afterwards, we will have a long discussion on this whole situation if you want to stick around uh, between what I think, how their rollout has been for their content, the tour, mod house stuff, just... I want to discuss it. I kind of did a little bit yesterday over on Patreon where I reacted to Lucembles like changing like the adjustments to their to their member profiles, basically like a fun little a variety video where I got to just see these members all together again. It has been a really long time. So that was fun to, to check out. That's over on Patreon now if you are interested. But let's get to this MV teaser and then we'll have our long discussion afterwards if you'd like to stick around. Um, but let's go. Sensitive MV teaser one. This comes out in like two days, I think. They're probably going to have a highlight medley too for the album, but I don't know if I will upload a reaction to that or just wait for, you know, to do the actual album. Let's go. I have expectations going into this of what I think this will be. Musically. Some old partners in crime. Okay, so this was very, this was like aesthetically maybe going for the vibe and the mood they're trying to portray here. Shout out to Dreamcatcher. Now, I think from what I've heard, this actually isn't instrumental from Sensitive. I think it's from one of the B-sides. I think it might be called Colorful. That's what I think this instrumental is from, not the title track. Hmm. Okay, no, I dig that. It's a great mood setter. I think I think that's that's pretty cool. I think this second teaser though is gonna go more into more into the actual song and what we see. Uh what what the members will be doing rather. Oh maybe it is the title track instrumental. Wow. Okay, let's watch it over again. Surprised by some aspects of this, but also uh, maybe a little bit what I expected. I expected something a little bit groovy, a little bit melodic sing-songiness, kind of something like, like, Le Seraphim, does, Hyde groups do it a lot, honestly. Uh, you, you get it with New Jeans and Le Seraphim a lot to where it's like, Sing, it's more like a melodic talking, basically, than an outwardly singing, and I expected that to be maybe the chorus as it works in with the funky vibe, and it is, it's bouncy, and it's fun and playful. Yojun looks amazing. What does her shirt say? You gotta now look for the hints. Sometimes I wonder if all this is happening because I didn't forward that email to people <laughs> okay that's funny and i like how there are all also allusions to previous luna imagery even here uh kind of looks like the like high high stairwell mm. wow they look great in their styling Hey, the chorus sounds good, man. The chorus really does sound good. Wow, they look so good. Hey, Drew, I got to get used to that. Not Olivia. The styling is fantastic. I love this, like, roller rink uh, Y2K throwback. It looks so good on them. It's literally ripped right out of uh, VV's debut solo. Okay, very pleasantly surprised about that. I think that the chorus sounds pretty damn great. Uh, they look fantastic in their styling, and that's one of the real pros, I think, that has been happening with this early, um, uh, th this early like rollout of concepts and everything, whereas I've had some trouble with some of the other things that CTD Entertainment, I think they're called, right, has been doing. Uh, but stylistically, of how they look, I think the song sounds pretty damn good. Really, the core important stuff for at least us as listeners, they're kind of hitting. Uh, they look fantastic. Damn. Um, okay, so now let's kind of discuss the other parts of 
of things I'm worried about, things I have been worried about, and what I am liking that they're doing. We'll start out first of all of just this schism that has happened of of Luna fans that is so very odd to me. In that, I mean, Luna fans in general, like, it's hard to say back when they were together, <laughs> Luna. Um, yeah, you had your really annoying ones. That that kind of is the case for any group. They were very, very vocal. And then you had the sweetest ones that you'd ever damn meet. And those were the ones that I ran into at concerts that were so, so very nice. Uh, and now it's turned into this weird like food fight on Twitter of people being on one side of the girls with Mod House and some being on the other side here with these girls. And I don't know what's wrong with you guys. What are you doing? You're literally like pitting the same team against each other, and it makes no sense at all to me. It's a lot of these people's misguided, deep-seated, eternal hatred for Jaden uh, in some ways. And I think that you really have to just let that go. You really have to get over that because I think that we got little tidbits drip fed to us throughout the years of what he was or maybe not doing with Luna kind of thing that made people dislike him. But if a lot of the girls were, were to go back to him and sign and sign with Mod House, I think they know better about what they want and what they're going to do what they want to do with their careers that you have to take their word for it basically you you don't know better than than Chetty and Hasul and Heejin and Jin Sol and Kim Love you don't you just don't and it, it is the way it is um and I think people do need to get over that especially especially in my opinion at least when you look at what has happened when you look at how they're being marketed promoted and the the visual style and how he's just handling it all between Odd Eye Circle between Artemis and even if you want to look at Triple S, I think it's going pretty fantastically. I think it's going really, really well. Uh, and I'm at least enjoying all of it. Triple S has put out some of my favorite music really of this whole year. It's been pretty astonishing. Um, so there's not much hatred to really have there. And then you look at this side with, with CTD Entertainment. I hope I'm getting that right. It was an unknown quality, ba uh, quantity basically in some way. So I was a little unsure and I was wondering why, hey, why didn't these girls want to go and sign with Mod House? Why didn't they want to rejoin with their members and choose a different path? Of course, you have your solos of, of Chu and Eve doing the same thing. And hey, sometimes it all changes and what you want is not the same as when you sign your first year contract with Blockberry kind of thing. And I knew that going in. I really did know that going in, in that I didn't expect all of these girls of Luna to form under one group. It just seemed a little too pie in the sky. They might do something down the line altogether, but as like a, a what Luna was, and I think that's part of it when it comes to the Lucemble base that is a little upset, is they really want to hold tight onto the Luna that was, and that can never really be again, and you have to just accept that and take what you can get here. Because honestly, the resulting, uh, the, the, the result of that whole entire mess with Blockberry has been basically as good as you could have possibly imagined. You're getting new music from all of them in different ways, and they are doing what they want to do. You, you really should have looked at this as a blessing in that we couldn't have imagined that it would go quite this well, especially lawfully how it's going for, for True right now. Um, it's all pretty great news. Uh, now, when it comes to CD Entertainment and what they've been doing with Lucembol, I've had some precautions about it all because I didn't know this uh, label and I didn't know if this was maybe some cash grab because it was very odd how they were kind of projecting and posing them as Luna, even though they weren't. Even if you go and look up different articles and different ticketing websites, it'll say that you're buying tickets for Luna and you're not. You're buying tickets for Lucembol. And I never wanted it to be this shadow of this image of them trying to recapture something that is never going to be again, rather than them just being their own new group and being together with some nods here and there to, to, to you know, still being part of Luna in some ways. That's kind of what I wanted. Um, the name, yes, it's not very good. The members picked it out themselves apparently though, so we'll take it. The fandom is called Clue. I don't know if that's supposed to be an allusion to the way that people search for clues in their music videos when it comes to Luna. I'm not sure. Uh, so the naming could be better in my opinion, 
But where I do think that they have kind of nailed it so far is number one, I think the producers working on the songs for the for the album, really great. Uh, if you look at their past history of things they've worked on, it's things that I personally really, really like. So I'm excited for that. The music seems like it's going to be it's going to be good from what you see on paper exactly. And a lot of these members have writing credits on the album, which you like to see as well. Uh, and the styling, I think the concept photos they came out with were fantastic. That was when I started to be like, hmm, maybe I can get a little confident for this because I wasn't given that confidence early on when it came to the tour stuff. You can't really announce your tour. You can't put out, have people pay for your fan membership before you've released a single song or even a teaser of a song. It was all a little hasty. And that's really showing in this tour. This tour is a mess and I don't know what they were thinking. Number one thing, we're not gonna like beat around the bush in that like here you have members I love, but, but let's, put it straight that these are some of the, the lesser popular members of Luna. That is just the way it is. There are some of the members that got the least lines in songs as well. Uh, Heiju is probably the most popular out of this group, I would say. Uh, so you have to sell tickets and you can't really build them as Luna as they were before, nor can you sell, you can't sell venues that are larger than the venues Luna had literally just a year ago when they toured as 12 or 11 rather, <laughs> you can't you, you you can't do that. And they they got the Kia Forum in LA, which has like 14,000 seats, 14,000 seats. And they're doing what? I think seven, 8,000 of them are actually being ticketed and they've sold maybe 20, 25%. Let's look at New York, which is in two days, which is the same day as the release of this music video and the album on, on the 15th. For some reason, they thought it was a good idea to have the first tour day be the day of release. And this is what you're at right now. This is how many seats are available for a show that is in two days. And if you look at pricing, you know, they're still charging. They're still charging $300 plus dollars. That's before fees for a seat. You... I don't know what you really expect in this situation. And yes, I understand that that some of these venues are so large that they have to charge a certain amount of money per ticket to recoup costs. That just is the way it works. Otherwise, they would be like woefully in the red here. But this is the Hulu Theater at MSG. I saw Itzy there. Uh, I don't know if this group should be playing in the same size of venues as Itzy. And you need to start to look at this as a realistic in a realistic point of view, not as an orbit point of view of like, they can sell out SoFi Stadium if they want it. You need to just look at it in the way that will actually benefit the group. And I think that they just are go a little in above their heads. And this is not talking about the members. I'm talking about management. I'm talking about the label. It's a little too much. And I'm doing my part. I have my VIP ticket to their LA show. I have my flight to their LA show. Like I, I'm doing the thing. But a lot of people, a lot of people aren't, and it has me uh, a little bit worried. And as for the music, like I said, these are the members that had the least amount of lines. We aren't super sure about vocal abilities in terms of carrying whole groups, kind of kind of thing. Uh, Hyunjin has one of my favorite voices, Luna. I absolutely love her singing voice. It is really great for ballads and things like that. For pop songs, like a pop vocal, it's kind of like Hustle, where I think she's a great accompaniment. We will see how it how it goes into leading a song, maybe, because you would expect her in this group to be the main vocal. Uh, I want to call her Olivia again. Hiju has really, really improved. If you look at some of her singing clips of when she was on variety shows or like Fact and Star, where she gave it her all, um, her singing was a little raw, but she has really, really improved over the last two three years when she she's done a couple of those um uh those little side projects that they put out over on youtube where she'd cover a song it's very much improved uh so i'm excited to see the fruition of that and then you have a member like yojin who's still very young and and uh flexing those talents and i'm excited to see what vivi and gohan can do in terms of getting more lines people wanted it for so long and now with you know, way, way less members in this group, you're gonna get it and we'll see, we'll see how it all works for the song. Uh, so that was my worry of like, what are these going to sound like? Because 
we don't necessarily know what their vocals like are, are like when they're leading an entire song. Um, and yes, you can look at some of the solo stuff, but guys, that was like that was like six years ago. That was, it was it was a long time ago. We need to. It's a new it's a new day kind of deal. And yeah, this is me kind of just haphazardly spilling out all of my thoughts at once so it might come out as like a little bit of a mess but I'm a very passionate fan of this whole group and I really want the best for them but at the same time I really do look at this in a realistic way I don't look at this with with rose-colored glasses and I'm and I really am hoping for the best and from what we get from this teaser it sounds pretty good to me it sounds pretty good to me it's something that I expected to where they will they will play it maybe a little safe in the chorus and go for something like if you check out the the chorus of like Ella Seraphim's Blue Flame or something like that, where it's catchy, it's not crazy vocal heavy, but it's it's slick and it's smooth uh, and, and it's attractive in that way. Although some of the ad-libs in the back of this song from the teaser were actually really great. Uh, so I'm impressed with that as well. So I'm very, very excited to possibly be proven wrong by this label in that they know how to handle this group. I was just very worried. I was very worried. Um, but I guess we will all find out in two days. So that was a lot to just kind of push out there. Let me know what your thoughts are. Are you seeing them on tour? I wonder what this tour will be like because they'll just have this brand new one mini album. I guess they'll be doing a lot of covers and maybe pulling out some old Luna songs that they'll be doing. Uh, kind of like how Odd Eye Circle has on their tour. But yeah, let me know your all your thoughts about this. I treat this channel and the way I talk about things in a very realist kind of way. So I'm not going to really wax poetic about anything that I'm genuinely worried about. And that's the way we're going to continue to do it. Even when it comes to what is, what was my favorite group in Luna. Uh, so yeah, thank you guys so much for watching with me. Thank you for listening. If you're still here and hearing me go on a diatribe, if you're interested in some extra content for Luna, for Odd Eye Circle, Artemis, Lucembol as well, any of that stuff over on Patreon. I've got a ton up there. There's already so much Luna backlog content. We're doing the Artemis uh, videos on there. I forget, already forget what they call them, Explore Logs. And I just posted my first Lucembol, Lucembol content up on there yesterday. We'll have the album up on there when it drops. Thank you guys so much. Let me know your thoughts. Subscribe if you are new, and I will see you next time.